Hello everybody, today I wanted to show you how to ship your reptiles and what you can expect when you buy a reptile online and have it shipped to you. If you can, it is always better to get it in person, but if that's not possible for you, shipping to you or to a local FedEx is a very valid and safe thing to do. And with Morph Market being so prevalent, we're able to access snakes that we normally would have no ability to get feasibly without driving a large distance or securing at a show that happens to be local with your favorite breeder. The first step before you even get to this is to book your shipment. We have a few options in the reptile community now and I think quite frankly they're all really good. Today I'm going to be prepping the box through a shipment that I have already booked on Redline Shipping. Redline is a relatively newer company but they come from people that know what they're doing. They've been in the reptile industry for a long time. They understand what these animals need and they've really risen to a position of trusted leader in the reptile community very quickly all things considered. I've used Ship Your Reptiles in the past with no issues whatsoever. They're also wonderfully phenomenal people. And there's also Reptiles to You, which I've never used, but I've also heard great things and I've met and spoken to the people there at shows. They're all wonderful options. You just need to leverage what works best for you. So I want to show you how quick and easy it is to book a shipment on Redline. The only thing you have to do to get started is to make your account. On their website itself, there's plenty of tools here. They actually sell a lot of cool supplies. I believe that's actually how they got started with really nice supplies and stuff like that but you can just get a quick quote if you just need to quote someone on what the shipment might cost and then from here on out you just look the shipment once you put your information in it will save it and you don't even have to do anything else you can click on the local weather drop off locations very convenient to find out if you didn't know for your first times where your local FedEx hub will be because that when you're all said and done is where you're going to go to drop your reptile off to be sent off to its next new home obviously the weather is very important because you don't want to ship in ridiculously cold or hot weather. On top of that, if there are major weather conditions uh, like tornadoes, you don't want to ship in that either. And down here, you'll just put your package weight and dimensions. You'll put the description of what you're shipping right here, which in our case will be a ball python today. Then on this side, you fill out the customer's information or who you're shipping it to. It is highly recommended that when possible, you ship to a FedEx facility, but you can ship direct to an address. You would click here on new address if that's the case. But today we're just going to pretend to ship to a FedEx hub. And let's just say we're going to ship to say Salt Lake City. They have four facilities within 100 miles. We'll just pick the very first one here. Then we will enter in our information. Today we're going to be selling to Patrick Stewart of Star Trek and X-Men fame. It is also recommended that you put in an email address. That way the customer can receive updates on their shipment as well. Shipping on a Tuesday or Wednesday is best, but we're shipping on Tuesday for Wednesday a delivery. And in this case, we're gonna skip the additional email notifications, although you can put whoever else you want in there. And you just click get rates. So in this case, you can see here that Redline has negotiated on our behalf to save us quite a bit of money. If you tried to go through FedEx yourself, for one, I don't believe you'd be able to because you are not an authorized retailer able to ship reptiles and they do that on your behalf. But also you'd be spending a lot more. So why would you want to do that? So in this case, we save a cool 50 bucks and our cost for priority overnight shipping is $75.82 and this is what you want to do. You want to do priority overnight. I think you can also do standard overnight too as long as you're going to a hub but look at the price difference anyway. Let's do priority overnight. You don't want to do two-day express saver or express ground. These are really for supplies. After that you can put your insurance on here so $100 whichever it is. It's basically every $100 is about $250 in insurance cost. You can go ahead and donate the US ARC here which is always a great idea. Take your opportunity to throw at least a little bit their way. They do a lot of great stuff for us. Then you just go down here. If you needed to create more labels, let's say that you're selling quite a few, you can do that as well before you check out. But in this case, we're done. So we're just gonna continue right to the checkout. If you got any coupon codes, which believe it or not, on your first shipment, call or ask or maybe go to a show. You can get yourself a coupon code that's gonna save you a pretty penny. In this case, I'm not gonna do anything with coupon codes. Our total after everything, we've got the insurance 
insurance we donated is $79.32. Now, shipping a reptile is expensive and that should be added into your cost if that's what you wanna do. Most people do that. So a snake would be $300 plus shipping. So you can estimate how much that would be, but you are the business owner. You decide what you wanna do. Maybe you wanna offer free shipping. That's a significant thing to offer free shipping. As you can see here, 80 bucks is nothing to sneeze at and sometimes it's a lot more. If I was say going to California, that would be pushing into the hundred dollars because now you're going a little bit further. I usually don't see it for more than a hundred dollars, at least on smaller hatchling ball pythons. Now, when you start getting into heavier boxes, bigger boxes, this is going to go up. So that's just something that you have to be realistic and understanding about as both a buyer and a seller. Be honest about what you're going to charge. But from here on out, we just click agree to terms. Then we'll move on to our payment information, which is where I'll stop it because as soon as I put the payment information and hit submit and I've booked another shipment and I'm not actually shipping a bull python to Patrick Stewart at this time. But if you want one, Patrick, call me. As soon as we have booked our shipment, it will send us to a page where we can print out our documents, but it's also gonna email those to you as well. If you have a printer, great. If you don't, you're gonna have to head down to your local printing store or to a library and print these out, which is no big deal either. While you are at that though, you need to print off the Lacey Act labels. Now, sometimes the boxes will kind of have them on there, but quite frankly, I do it again. I'd make another one and I put it on the other side. You can never be too safe. This is not something you can forget. This is a law, but you can get these Lacey Act amendments on there site as well under shipping documents just go to get help shipping documents and you can print off a bunch of them here you can just download it as a pdf file you can also print these inserts for inside of your box there's one big one or a bunch of smaller ones which you can cut up i just did the smaller ones these are optional but the lacy act amendment ones are not so make sure you are also printing those for yourself to put on the side of your box after you've done that, you'll have your labels. Now it's time to have the box. Sites like Reptile Basics sell them or the very sites that you're sending these out on sell the supplies. So you can get these box kits from them, which come with the box, a bunch of styrofoam padding as well, which is what's going to enable your snake to get safe and sound to its destination. You wanna make sure you pick a proper box size. And this is very important. I see a lot of times people say that they just wanna get, I believe it's the six by six by six. It's a much smaller box, about half the size of this, if not a little more. It's totally safe for a baby ball python as long as you do not need any sort of heating or cooling element to it. It is very deadly to put heating into these things if not followed properly. I just play it safe and go with the 12 by 9 by 6. Now today I'll show you how but I will not be putting a heat pack on. A lot of people think that all shipments of reptiles should have heat packs because they need heat. That is very incorrect. And if you do that, you're more likely to kill your snake than had you just forgotten it. Too much heat is way more deadly than a very chilly ball python. It will arrive slightly chilly and cold to the touch, but that is fine. Usually you do not want to put a heat pack in if it's going to be 70 or above. That might surprise a lot of people, but it gets a lot more toasty in this box than it is outdoors. And it is far more likely to kill your snake if you put the heat pack in in these conditions. This is only really shipping during winter that you need it or during maybe some of those fall months or just weeks that just get a little bit cold. It's quite frankly why I just don't ship in the winter. It's also when the holidays hit, so shipping is also already bad. Just ship in the spring, summer, and the fall, but not in the really, really hot summer. You should not be shipping in 100 degree weather, for God's sakes. And remember, you need to check not just the weather where you live, but you're shipping this across the country. What's the weather where it's going to arrive? That's probably even more important because when you drop it off at the FedEx facility, it's going to be in a climate controlled area. So it probably won't need quite as much of that safety where it's being dropped off at. It needs it where it's arriving. Where I'm actually going to be shipping this, I believe it's going to be in the 80s. I'm not going to be putting a heat pack in this because it will endanger the snake's life. First off, get our supplies. You can see we got a lot of styrofoam here, which we'll get into how we take care of that. But we start off with this here, which obviously is flat, ships with a bunch of other boxes. I think about like 30 of them all at once, which there you can get up there. You're spending about 300 some dollars on 30 of these or so. But you gotta think that in the long run, you're gonna be making your money back and then some. So again, what I was saying about the shipment, you can charge shipping and handling to make up for that cost. That's up to you whether you wanna eat the cost or put that towards your shipments. So first things first, it's pretty simple. Just make your general box just on the bottom. You just want to use one strip of tape here though. 
Doesn't matter if it's clear or if it's brown packing tape, but it needs to be packing tape. That's it, one strip. If you want to reinforce it, that's fine, but just make sure it's only on the seam here. You wanna leave these cracks down here, so. If you technically, again, you wanna just reinforce your box. If you really wanna go sideways like that, that's fine. I do that. What I'm getting at here is that when you're normally shipping other boxes, you probably wanna cover the seams and do a strip here and here. Do not do that. This allows and helps with the airflow. But this is where the styrofoam comes into play because this is what's going to create a safe shipping container for your bowl python to make its way to its destination. So first, we put the base in, and then these are kind of formed together kind of like a puzzle. You can see that it doesn't exactly make the entire length of the side there, but that's because we put this next one in and it slots right down there next to that. And then again, you have a slot here, which will slot right next to that. And voila. Now what you're gonna wanna do after this is poke holes in here for some additional ventilation. What you wanna do is just two holes on this side and two holes on this side. So on the ends, basically. No more, no less. I believe all the sites adhere to this. And if you do not adhere to this, again, if you do the insurance, you will have voided it. So you don't have to use a drill bit, but I find it's better just because you think about it, it could technically crack it if you're going in there with something else. But a Phillips screwdriver, if you don't have any other options, is perfectly acceptable too. But I have a 1 4th inch drill here, and that's what I'm gonna use today. One quick important note to make here is that you'd want to do this while your insulation foam is in there. What good would it do to make the hole and then put the insulation foam to block the hole? So you do want to go right through the insulation foam and probably go through there a couple times just to make sure it's an actual hole. And to do that again, one more time on this side and then just repeat on the other side. All right, we're all set. Just quick safety note, don't be holding your hand on the other side of it or you uh, might drill through your hand. So after that, you kind of just want to make sure that you empty your box of some of these little fuzzies that are going to be in there. Make yourself a nice little mess here. You can clean it up later. You don't want to be sending that to your customers, I'd say. At this point, we're just going to basically build a nest in here out of some material. I've seen people use cotton, which is really nice looking. I've seen people use towels or shirts even, which is also pretty neat, but they were going to be using some packaging paper. You just want to create a nice little nest here. So the bottom of it, I'd say, is gonna have more material than the top. I'd say that this is probably more than enough. Remember your snake's gonna be in there too. And you've gotta have room to put the final piece of insulation foam on top, because that's where that's gonna go. One other quick thing, here's one of the red line labels. Now, when you're doing these, whether it be that side or this side, and if you have it printed on there, uh, you can either just use the one or both of them. I use both. You need to fill this out. Three things you need on there. Harmless reptile, which I've heard, I guess you don't because it's there, but I've heard once that you do, I'm putting it on there. So it needs to say harmless reptile. Then you need to put the amount of animals that you're sending and what you're sending. So in this case, one ball python. If you had a bigger box and you were sending two, you'd put two ball pythons. If you had two ball pythons and a crested gecko, you'd put two ball pythons, one crested gecko. And then underneath that, finally, you need the scientific name for the animal you're sending. Again, I'm sending just a ball python today, so this would be Python Regius. Then just check mark reptiles, tape that to the box, and you're good to go. In this case, it's already on there. You can see my little spelling error where I wanted to put one ball rython. We're gonna put one here as well. Once you've secured your label and made your box up, make sure that you did not accidentally cover up any holes during this. In fact, I often, after I get this packing paper in here, will go through with the drill one more time just to make sure. So the snake we will be shipping out tomorrow will be a banana pied male. This is not a banana pied male. This is my wife's snake, Hercules. It is a bamboo pinstripe, at least possible pastel. I think it is, it's pretty lightheaded, but he's going to be subbing today as our model snake. You'd wanna just go ahead and put them in the snake bag like normal. I also recommend putting some paper towel in there. That way if your snake decides to relieve itself, because that is a decent chance that that's gonna happen by the way. There's nothing you can do about that but if you have some paper towel in there it will help with some absorbency then you just want to tie up your bag again i'm not going to tie it up or apply the zip tag today but you go ahead and tie it up put a zip tie on i highly recommend using a zip tie by the way as a backup making sure your snake's head has not gone up 
because they love to try to escape. And then just secure that bag and then you're good to go. You want to fold that up, put the snake into its new little home here. That way it is nice, safe, and secure. Not pushing down too hard because remember it is in there. It honestly might benefit you to remove some in some cases, but I think we're good. Now if you did need to put a heating pack, this is where you would do it. Usually you want to prep these about two hours or so before. Let them get warmed up. Maybe put them in some towels so that they can kind of just retain some of that heat. These ones here that I got last up to 40 hours, so in plenty enough time to arrive in the one day shipping that they should. With that said, I think there's ones you can get that last even longer. I'm not going to open this again because I don't want to waste it, but if you look very closely here, once you open it, you can see this red line right here underneath there. So obviously it's gonna be like a white patch. You activate the thing, then you want to tape it like so to the bottom of what will be the top of your insulation. And you'll do that by taping here, 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 here. You do not want to tape over the red line under any circumstances. That is actually how it vents the heat into the box. Now obviously you're gonna go over it here, maybe in here, but I'm talking about in general. Don't go over the red line because then you will have effectively made this useless. After that's said and done, then you would put it in. Now in this case, we're not doing that. This right here is not necessary, but it is advised to put it right there. Because remember, FedEx has the right to check these. And if they see Lacey Act stuff on there, they might open your package if they don't get the right information. This is basically another warning telling them, hey, Redline Shipping is a certified animal shipper. You know, if you got questions, call them here. So this just tells them, oh, okay, we're good. They might look into it a little more, but I recommend having these in there. And then the final touch is if you've got any merch or anything like that, some stickers, some business cards, send them along to your customer because they would appreciate it. And that's how you're going to get your name out there. Just put that in there like that. Maybe being a little considerate of where they might need to cut to get this package open. So we'll just say this is our label today. We're gonna put one piece of tape over there and then we'll tape the rest of this to this while not covering the edges so that you can have more room to breathe. And you're pretty much good to go. You just go ahead and drop it off at your local FedEx hub that you booked this all through. Now this is what we like to call a triple container. So the first layer is the box. The second layer is the foam. And the third layer would be the bag that it is in. Now, besides the obvious safe arrival of your animal, there's also one other major concern when shipping your reptile that you need to consider that affects a larger picture than just you. And that is what I was referring to with the Lacey X. The reason all this is around is because there are a lot of eyes and ears to our community. Right now, there's a attempt to revive the Lacey Act amendments, which would make a white list and make it so that lawmakers who know nothing would have to approve reptiles as being okay versus them having to say oh hey this snake is bad ban it at least in that case if they make what's called a blacklist they have to become educated about an animal to then make the decision to ban it the white list will just ban everything unless they say it's okay so to avoid this it's very important that we represent our hobby well and the other point of having a triple container is that it doesn't get loose if you're not careful and you don't use an approved shipping box it's a good chance it gets out if you don't use the foam. There's a good chance it gets out. The bag, good chance it gets out. We have a responsibility because people will use that as ammunition to end all of this. And if you don't think it affects you as a ball python breeder, think again, because there's already places where you can't really ship ball pythons and such anyways. And maybe they don't make ball pythons illegal, but maybe they make shipping any reptile illegal. That's cyanar to a lot of people. So just remember what you do affects the entire community. It affects more than just you. So you might think, Think, well this only ruins my reputation it does not it ruins everyone's um and politicians are all too eager to use it as ammunition against us it doesn't take much time so just take the extra little effort to make sure it's all good the security and safety of your animals is realistically the only thing outside of that it's just some paperwork so it's not a very difficult thing i i've done these in five minutes and i don't do a ton of shipping i prefer to do my business in person i like to meet people i like to talk to people but sometimes that's not possible um, I've shipped all over the country at this point now and it's it's crazy to think that but um every single time it's been fine and every single time I pay <laughs> I panic more than I probably should because I want to make sure it's there and I'll do the same thing on Wednesday morning I'll be hey 
you get it says you got it it says it's there are you good you got it and <laughs> good so just make sure you're doing your part and that you're caring for this because it's also a live animal and it deserves your respect and the best chance that it can have in life with all that said i do want to preface that anytime you ship there is a very small risk of delays uh it's just a fact of life most of the time if a delay happens you're gonna have a heart attack but they're probably gonna be fine it can occur but they usually are very hardy animals there's videos out there i saw from mutation creation that uh showed snakes that were left in a tarmac for over a day in freezing weather when they finally arrived i think they were a few days late and they were left on a airplane tarmac that's outdoors in canada in the winter for over a day you'd think that that's an instant death sentence they all lived um, they're hardy animals, so they're probably going to be fine. Anytime you ship, there is a little bit of a risk, but it's a very negligible risk. And if you're careful, there's nothing really to worry about. So I hope that this helped you. If you're scared or paranoid about shipping, um, good. That means your heart's in the right spot. If you're looking for more tips on how to start a ball python business, you can actually check out our video on that subject right here. 